Hey coin collectors, Dan the Collecting Man here. Today I want to talk about storage and handling of your precious metals. Where's some of the best spots to put it in your house? Talk about safes, talk about how to handle coins correctly uh, and what kind of coins you should handle correctly versus ones that you can hold and play with. And also different storage ideas that I've been using that work for me and what kind of uh, products you should have as part of your storage and handling to ensure you look after your products uh, as best as you can. So I thought I'd start with handling of products. So how to handle a coin and when it's okay to handle a coin with your fingers and when you should be wearing gloves and what type of gloves you should be using. So I thought I'd start off with handling first. So the key rule of thumb that most people use is always using holding a coin from the side like this. So you'll see graders from PCGS uh, and all the other grading companies, they actually don't wear gloves when they actually grade the coin, but they hold the coins like this. So that way there's no fingerprints going on the coin. So they're very careful of how they hold the coins and they just hold them like that on the edges and then you don't get fingerprints on the coin. So that's probably one of the key things whenever you go to a bullion store or anything else, whenever you go to pick up a coin, regardless if it's a round or if it's a proof coin or whatever, always pick up a coin like this and always hold it like that. That uh, shows respect uh, for the coin shop owners and it also makes sure you look after the coins correctly. So another thing is to also never touch the face. So you've, I've also got a round here. A round is something that you can uh, touch and play with because this is just a silver round it's not a coin uh, it's just a little bit of silver so there's no key issues holding it like this and playing with it it doesn't matter this has one has a little bit of milk spotting on it so even then whenever you sell it back to a bullion dealer it doesn't matter if it's all faded or toned sorry it you'll still get the same value back so it doesn't matter the condition when you give it back uh, it doesn't matter, you'll still get the same value back no matter what the condition is. Where some of these kind of government minted ones, uh, these coins, you will get a better uh, buyback potentially if it's in good condition. Now this one, you, as you can see here, has a bit of milk spot on the king's head. And I've got this one here, the kangaroo 2024, which unfortunately is quite milk spotted as well. But I'm still holding the coin like this, it's just out of habit for me to hold coins like this and pick them up. But it's also good because you can get a nice clear look at the actual coin uh, when you hold like that out of a capsule. So coins that you should have in capsules. So I've got these, th this is how I store my coins. And often these special edition ones, like this one here is the King's Coronation. It came in the capsule. So when they come in the capsule from the mint, that's often a good sign to show that you should probably, probably keep it in the capsule and not really touching the coin. So. I do that, you can still look at the coin, there's no issue there, but I do find most of my coins I do put in capsules just because I like to be able to get them out, show them off, and not worry about putting any scratches or anything on them on the actual coins themselves uh, to keep them in mint condition. So even some of these ones, just because I want to keep it in nice condition. Uh, but if I was ever to sell this back to a bullion dealer, I'll be taking it out of the capsule and giving it to it as a raw coin, not in the capsule. That's only for my own personal preference from that aspect. So then you've got gloves. So cotton gloves are probably the most popular ones that people like to use. Uh, but these do have, uh, can put micro scratches in the actual coin. Again, so you've got to be careful with these. Again, you still hold them on the side of the coin, but it'll stop the oils from your fingers going onto the coin. But do be careful not to rub the coin with these gloves uh, to try and clean it or anything else, because you will end up putting micro scratches into the gloves. Another one are these, uh, kind of gloves here. So these are like the food handling gloves that they use. This is what I personally like to use, is these ones here. Uh, I find I get good de dexterity. I don't worry about the with the cotton potentially dropping the coin. These ones I can feel like I can feel the coin uh, a lot safer. And these are the special ones, food grade, that you don't have all the powder and everything else on them. So they're, I find them the best uh, whenever I use coins so when i get them out so especially proof coins i get them out for grading uh to get them in the slips for grading these are the kind of gloves that i personally do use another key thing to note is to keep uh your gold and silver separate so here's some gold these are in special capsules but if you have some gold that's not in the capsule uh keep it away from the silver because that will actually end up toning the silver so 
just be aware of that though sometimes silver and gold doesn't actually mix and silver it can be very temperamental and actually tone quite easily when it's put with other metals so just be aware of that that ideally you keep it separate uh, like these are all in capsules and all kept uh, separate so that way I don't have any risk of toning with my coins another key thing to look after is make sure it's kept in a cool dark place uh, away from moisture so don't put it in a, near the bathrooms or anywhere else where you're going to get the humidity and steam and nowhere where it's going to get the direct sunlight I personally use these kind of gels so these are often when you get brand new shoes or certain bits of uh, new equipment you might get one of these in there and this is really really good to use to make sure you keep the moisture in there so in my safes I've got a whole heap of these in there and you can put them in the sun and it'll actually dry them out so it's a really good uh, way to, to look after them so every couple of months or whatever depending on how they're going you t put them out in the sun and it'll dry them out and then you put them back in there but definitely make sure you have some of these in your safe or wherever you're keeping your coins or collectibles so next we'll talk about actual some storage ideas so i use these little boxes for my silver rounds and coins so these are these really cool little boxes and i find i like to sort them out based on countries or based on what they are here is one with all of the australian different types of coins that i've got here so kangaroos or native animals or lunar series they're the kind of boxes i've got i find they're really easy to store on top of each other and you can keep all your coins in there nice and easy and it keeps them nice and safe and you can sort them out but the next thing i love is these little boxes here so these are ones that you can use for your card so i've got here this is uh, platinum these are my special circulated coins and then i've got this bigger one here uh, for all my gold cards that I've got so where it's got bits of gold and cards and these are kind of like airtight little containers but you can see really what's in it which is what I love so so these are the key ones that I use these are the ultra pro so the bigger box that I've got the gold in is the 250 uh, two-piece box and the smaller ones are the 100 piece uh, 100 count two-piece box so they're designed for cards to keep cards basketball cards and footy cards and Formula One cards safe so they're really perfect uh, they've got no PVC or acid free ultra clear and they stack really well so by putting them in a safe uh, you can put everything in there nice and easily and it stacks it all nice and simple but also you can see what's inside it so that's what I love about these is I can really see what what I've got inside and how it's stored together and it comes up perfectly so you can put these two on top like that and you're not wasting too much space uh, but it stores everything nice and clear and simple but also keeping it kind of airtight which is a, a really good uh, thing to have so just bear these in mind this is what I personally use and I'll find it a really really good unique way also uh, making sure that you do get some good capsules if you do get them I personally use uh, these ones here so these are like the lighthouse ones uh, these are really really good uh, airtight ones so ultra perfect fit so they help to make sure you don't have any uh, air in there so even on these that has what they're actually for so these american eagles australian, australian kookaburra and koala this one's got the Krug Rant and britannia so when you buy them that actually does put on the front what kind of bullion rounds they're designed for so this is what i use personally i think they're really really neat and then you also have these flips so a lot of people also like these kind of flips uh, i personally use them whenever i sell send coins off to be graded uh, so they're definitely good for that purpose you can easily put a coin in there and actually fold it over and, and crease it and then write on there what the coin is and that's another good way of keeping your coins nice and safe uh, and without getting any damage and it's got all the key things to make sure that the coin won't tone or have any issues so really really good making sure you've got no pvc or oils in it so another great way of storing them so then we go into actually safe so making sure that when you do have uh coins of a uh, certain value uh, you want to make sure that you are locking it up in a safe so making sure you don't go to your local hardware store and get something cheap because uh, you find those cheap ones uh, don't have a good fire rating and burglars can easily break into it they've figured out how to get the codes or actually deactivate them so you do have to make sure you spend some good money go to a safe shop or get something second hand on the internet uh, someone that's used a safe that's nice and thick uh, that has a good 
cash rating. So a cash rating is really good. Shows <clears throat> how hard it is for it to, to break in. Uh, that normally gives the thickness and the walls uh, and it normally helps with your insurance. But it also, ha you need to have a good fire rating because silver and metal do have a, about a thousand degree melting point and a house fire can be well over a thousand degrees, easily melt your precious metals away. So just be careful of that, that you want to have a good decent fire rating that lasts a sustainable amount of time, at least two hours or so. So that way if the house fire happens, you've at least got time to put the fire out and reduce that risk. So also safes are made to reduce the risk of someone breaking in. So they all safes can be broken in eventually if someone had enough time and effort and energy to get in there. So they're more of a deterrent to slow burglars down, those quick cash and grab kind of burglars that will reduce that. But just be aware that even some of the best safes have been broken into. So it's more about where you put the safe is the key thing. So I'd love to put down in the comments below what are some of the good ideas that you've seen where you can put safe without giving away your own personal information just tell us where you think a good location for a safe is uh, under the floorboards is probably one of the most popular uh, putting in air vents uh, where the air ducts is uh, behind paintings in coffee tables another one sheds and old equipment like an old washing machine uh, boring that out and putting it inside there but making sure that it's not somewhere obvious. So don't put it in your wardrobe. The One of the first place that burglars look at is your wardrobe. They look at the tops and bottom of all the cupboards because that's normally where people keep their precious items. So definitely don't keep it in somewhere obvious or under a bed, under a mattress. They're the, another thing where burglars go straight for first thinking that's where you're gonna keep your items. So put it in a less obvious location. Another thing is I personally like to store my precious metals at home. So the key saying is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So that's one of the key stackers uh, phrases. So making sure that you do keep it at home. Uh, and the key thing I like about that is you can look at it anytime. So if I get up late at night and I want to look at one of my coins, I can easily get up and have a look at it. And I personally love looking at silver and enjoying it. So if it's in somewhere that's not on my own personal location, then I don't have that access to these beautiful items. Also, if you need quick access to cash, you've got the ability to grab your bullion and go to a bullion dealer and get the cash on the day. Uh, where if it's in some kind of bank or a certain bullion dealer, you might have a bit of a restriction there in getting the actual coins back. Bank vaults and storage is probably, for me, probably the lowest thing that I would do. That's probably, for me, the biggest risk. Because certain things like that, they can close down, like over COVID, a lot of people notice that. They're very strict hours to get in and you need certain ID to get your items. So if you've lost your ID and you need the cash, you won't have the ability to get get the, the coins back as quickly as you might want. So just be wary of that uh, and be wary of buying certain coins and then having it stored at those bullion dealers. Most of them are pretty good, but sometimes they'll sell you that you're buying a good value one when in the end you're buying a piece of a bigger piece of of silver so just be wary of that uh, i personally that's why i like to make sure i own it and i physically have it in my hand i know what i'm paying for i know i'm not getting fakes or ripped off the next key thing is to make sure you don't tell people don't tell public and don't tell people how much you've got and definitely don't tell people where it is and how you've hidden it because uh, loose lips sink ships, as we've, as we've all heard before. So just be wary of who you tell. Maybe your your partner, uh, but making sure they're aware not to tell people. Don't tell your kids or even some of your family members because they might get excited and go, oh, Dan's got all this cool gold and silver and he stores it here. And this is where he stores it. And it's really cool how much he's got. Because all of a sudden it needs to end up in the wrong person's hands and they'll come hunt me down, find out who I am and actually still is a good so that's why i'm very careful of giving away my location and my full name and all my key information uh, to make sure that it is keeping my stack safe and making sure i keep my family safe as well and i'd love to hear your feedback of what you do to store and look after your bullion your gold and silver how do you look after it what are the key things you like to do around your house uh, to make sure it's safe and give us some fun tips that you've heard or used in the past I've heard of people burying it in the dirt somewhere under rocks or even painting their bars 
uh, so it looks like a brick and putting it around the house so it looks like a brick. So please tell us what you, you think is uh, some good ideas and some funny ways of storing it and how do you store your bullion uh, like, like I do. This is what I do, it keeps it nice and easy and organized and I find these little containers are fantastic. Especially these ones with the cards, as you can see there, it keeps all the cards nicely stored and you can see straight away what's in it and they're nice and strong too so that's a key thing they're really strong well, well made so for me they're a much better way of storing my precious metals if you enjoy this video and you found this information really helpful please ensure you give us a thumbs up it lets me know that people do enjoy the videos that i'm making so give us that big thumbs up and also make sure you are subscribed if you're not already subscribed and it really helps me know that people are enjoying the content that I'm creating. Please also know that you need to store your silver and gold at your own risk, and this is only for informational purposes. I'm making this video to try and help you get a bit of awareness of different ways of doing it, but you need to take your own considerations and your own risks in place when you are storing your own precious metals. Thanks so much for watching and joining the coin collecting community. I'll catch you in my next video. Dan.